There we go. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks so much for having us. As the slides say, uh, this is us. And we're going to just talk a little bit about um, product design, but for something quite different. Um, Esa Pekka is one of the most famous conductors in the world, one of the most famous composers in the world. And there's already a product there. <laughs> it's been around for 400, 500,000 years. Um, the product is kind of classical music. Um, and what we've done over the past five, six years is try and create different ways of taking that existing product and opening it up to a, a new audience. Um, and we've done that through a whole series of different things. Some of the images up here are from our kind of huge scale video installation projects. So we filmed the orchestra with multiple, multiple cameras um, playing a piece of music. There's um, Esapeka in action. Um, and what we've done with those sort of huge recordings of classical music is turn them into video installations that go into galleries. Um, and the point of doing that is to kind of open it up to a different audience, an audience who can walk away if they don't like the concert experience, who can walk into a gallery and have a beer or have a coffee while they're walking through the experience. So these are just some stills of the way in which we've worked. Um, that's Esapeka. This is kind of my point of view on these things. The last shoot we did for this was a 37 camera film shoot. So classical music has a lot of data involved. Um, and we're trying to capture that, take that data, and show it to a, a wide audience. Um, the installations look a bit like this. And I mean, Esapeka, why, why have we done this stuff? Like, why, why are you interested in bringing people into orchestral music in this way? Well, if you look at the history of any art form, but, but especially music, it, it's always, it goes hand in hand with the technological uh, development of its time. Uh, and somehow, my feeling was that after the Second World War, um, the development of classical music somehow fell behind the actual technologi technological uh, development. And I thought that it, it would be really interesting to try to bridge that gap, use the sort of state-of-the-art uh, digital technology in order to spread the word and in order, in order to make it uh, perhaps easier to approach for people who haven't grown up with this. Um, and I must say that uh, these experiences have been highly, highly encouraging. I mean, I think the key thing about these experiences, so here you can see people looking at huge screen versions of a classical music experience, um, people of all ages, and we've really aimed to mix up the analog and the digital. So while you're walking through these experiential pieces, you can bump into a, a real live breathing musician. Uh, and I think that's really important that we don't neglect the existing amazing experience that is live music. Um, we're just trying to do something that opens it to a different or wider audience. Um, we've also played around a little bit with um, gamification of this. This is our um, bass drum hero. Um, you have a physical bass drum. You have a guy telling you what to do. A dot goes down the line. You hit the bass drum. We spent quite a lot of time when we first talked about this of how would we make a simulator that, that simulates what it's like to play a bass drum. Um, and we ended up just giving people a bass drum. Like there's something quite appealing about not getting too tied up with the technology if it's not interesting. So the, the whole point, uh, what, what is different about an installation as opposed to a concert is that you are, when you go and see an experience, an ins installation, you are not bound to the timeline of a concert, because it, a concert starts, you have to sit there, and then you have to, in most cases, you have to sit there until the end of the concert. Um, but an installation is, the timeline is yours. You can, you can walk in, uh, the piece, in this case, The Rite of Spring by Stravinsky, is looping um, endlessly. You, you walk in, you, you kind of, sail through the uh, different layers of a symphony orchestra. You play along if you want. Uh, if there's a room that interests you more than the others, you can stay longer. If, if, you're, if you're not interested, you can go to the next one. If you hate the whole thing, you can just bugger off uh, after 30 seconds, which you cannot do mo mostly in a normal concert. If you love it, uh, you can spend the whole day or the, the week. And so the, the kind of straight jacket of the time that is running uh, has been eliminated this, in this experience. And I, I must say that uh, the feedback we have been, get, have been getting from, from the audiences has been 
very sort of strong on that point that it it's so easy to approach because there's no they, they, there are no rules you do what you want to do and and if you find it fascinating okay the next step is that you buy a ticket for a concert where we play the same piece and that actually worked pretty well in London when we did this first installation yeah I think the other thing to say about this is that we're not dumbing down the product in any way um, I couldn't possibly dream of doing that when I'm working with artists like Ezepeka, like the Philharmonia Orchestra. You can't take away from what that is. And a lot of educational programs around classical music want to sort of simplify it or make it easier. What we're trying to do is just open it up and allow people to dive into it, but without patronizing them. So it's more like we are trying to, we are celebrating the complexity of this art form. We are celebrating the different layers and the different expressions and the, and the fact that it's something these works of music are something you can always go back to and find new things in them. So simplification it is not. So some of the work we've been trying to do is guiding people through this music. We've also made a few fun things. This is a Kinect conductor simulator where you try and emulate uh, Esapeka's work on the, on the podium. Um, so your right hand follows time and your left hand controls volume and controls pan. And you know a great way of just engaging kids with and adults with doing this, it's quite difficult. You had trouble. I didn't do, do so well <laughs> trying, to trying to emulate myself. <laughs> the, the best ones were usually kids between five and 14. And so the kind of follow on from this was we tried to turn this into, a, into an app, into a, uh, a product. Um, and I'm gonna attempt a live demo um, now, if I can switch over to this, my iPad. Maybe. Can you switch? There we go. So this is the orchestra. Um, and it's kind of two parts, really. Um, it's kind of a guide to um, all the instruments of an orchestra, some of which we've heard on the, on the road earlier. Um, so it's, it's kind of part encyclopedia. You can look at every instrument in the orchestra. I'm going to choose the horn, because that's what SFECA played a long time ago. Um, and you can sort of learn about each instrument, you can have a look at each instrument, you can look at them in 360 and see how they physically work and what they do. You can hear from a musician in the orchestra. Hello, my name's Katie and I play the French horn in the Philharmonia Orchestra. I'm one of the two principal horns they have there. So I'm going to talk to you for a short while about the horn. Um, a couple of the fundamentals are the same as the other brass instruments in that we buzz our lips, like that, um, down the mouthpiece. Now, that doesn't really sound great on its own, but the amplifier, which is the French horn, makes it hopefully sound a little bit better. Like that. So you can learn about every, every instrument. You can even try and play them. Um, so this is kind of like uh, an encyclopedia. And I think the most interesting thing about the app is the other half of the app, where we've taken eight pieces of music and tried to present them in a way that is different to a concert experience, different to watching on TV as well. Um, so I'm going to try this uh, Berlioz. So you get, first of all, multiple video views, which you can scale up or scale down as you wish. Um, you can just watch Esapeka, if that's your thing. Um, following along with that, you can see the full score. So you can see what's going on. If you missed a bit, you just shuttle back and go and see how that works. And the score works in two ways. You have a curated score, which is kind of swapping in the instruments that are interesting at that time, or kind of important at that moment. Or you can literally see the full score, scale it down, and have a look at what the viola part's doing or what the cello part's doing. Over here, you can see who's playing and how loud at what time. And this is basically kind of built on a data set, which is the, which is the score itself. And you can also highlight what a particular instrument is doing by kind of dragging your figure over. I'll just attempt a bit where that's loud. So you can kind of hear what the strings are doing or what the timps are doing or what the basses are doing, and you kind of, in real time, work your way through the orchestra. 
So that's kind of a different way of exploring the material. And then we've also added in commentaries, so you can hear what Esapeka is thinking about whilst he's doing this. Woodwind, trumpets and cornets. We have church bells. We have uh, a large array of, of uh, percussion instruments. Or you can simply and a large string section. Read a note and look through the piece. So again, it's it's kind of a, a sort of huge, huge amount of data that we're trying to allow people to get into. And I think that's what something you, you always said to me was uh, talking about this kind of music, classical music for want of a better word, art music, is it's not difficult, it's just people don't have the kind of basic building blocks to even approach it. Is that correct or? Well, that's my theory that whatever uh, we experience in life, we need the framework in order to really enjoy it. I mean, uh, whether it's wine or food or sex or, or film or, or, or sport, I mean, we need to know the framework in order to be excited uh, about a, a football match. We have to know why they are kicking the ball around. Um, and, and the same thing with, with music. If, if you know something about the framework, I'm not saying that you have to have an encyclopedic knowledge of, of the thing, but if you know something about the framework, it, it becomes, the experience becomes more powerful uh, and more enjoyable. And that's all there is, really. So what we are doing is, is trying to help people to get more out of it, more pleasure, more excitement. And I think some of the things we've learned about doing this, the audience has a massive capacity to engage with this kind of stuff, and people will really go into, into depths and into details, and they come and quote bits of this commentary at me and at you, and I think there's a r real uh, awareness of us that we've learned about the power of the audience for this stuff, would you say? Absolutely, and sometimes um, when people hear classical music, I, I don't like the term, but there's no better term, unfortunately. When they hear classical music for the first time, they get kind of bewildered because there's so much going on. Uh, the experience is, is a bit similar to the Roadrunner. So it's, now it's there, now it's there, and the, the coyote is always in the wrong place. Uh, but the, the beauty of an app like this is that you can actually stop it, and, and you can go backwards, and you can, you can go forwards. You can, you can go deeper into the layers. You can click on the head of a player, and, and he or she starts explaining how it works. You can get a sort of talking head experience. I'm trying to describe what I'm thinking, if anything, when conducting these works, and, and so on and so forth. And um, so there is a, there's a way to sort of stop that relentless uh, uh, movement of time. And you can then go back to it when you feel like it. And that, of course, you don't have in real life. I think the other thing about the way in which we've tried to approach this is to try and make it fun. Like, it, it doesn't need to be a dry subject. It, the, the music's fantastic in its own right. Um, this is uh, a little image of one of the feedback stickers stuck on the wall at one of our installations in Germany. Um, and I love this because it, it just has to be cool. Like, there's no point in sort of messing around with this stuff if you can't make something that people get excited and interested about. And I think that's something that we've always tried to, to do together. I don't know if you think we've achieved it. Well, one of the best moments was actually when the rewrite installation was up in Lisbon, in the Design Museum in Lisbon, Portugal. And there were two old ladies, well into their 80s, playing the bass drum, uh, as instructed by the principal percussionist of the Philharmonia Orchestra on the screen. And they were having a whale of a time. They were banging the shit out of the, the bass drumming and really having a fantastic time. And I thought, when I saw this, I, I thought that this is the way it should be, that there are no age limits. You know, there could be a five-year-old having a great time. There can be uh, people in their 30s, 40s, uh, 20s. And, but also, if, you are, if you're 85, you can still enjoy and through the same playfulness. And I, I think that's one of the beauties of this kind of music and, and, and these kind of installations, that they are, non -ex non, uh, they are not exclusive. They're open for everybody. 
we've talked a little bit about your work conducting. Um, included in the app is your violin concerto um, and your half conductor, half composer. Tell us a bit about how this tech stuff overlaps with your composing work in terms of... Well, I use uh, a lot of technology when I write music. I uh, use notation software on my computer. I, I use uh, sequences. Uh, and I, I use MIDI systems in terms of playback, and also I use the iPad for sketching uh, music on, on the go. So, but in this way, I'm not unique by any means. Um, and of course, on the rock and pop side, this has been the norm for a long time, and it's catching up on the classical side as well. Uh, but yes, I'm, I actually depend on, on technology to a great deal. And does that inform how your work with technology comes together? I mean, do you, you get excited about products yourself and...? Yeah, I, I don't see a, a, a gap between what we do and, and, and technology. I, I, I think, uh, you know, obviously symphony orchestra is a very analog thing. You, you have these wooden boxes, you scrape them with, with uh, horses' uh, tail hair. Um, so that's a very analog kind of activity. But, but the distribution, the creation and distribution uh, happens digitally, and I think this is one of the beautiful things where the two worlds come together and create something which is more than the sum of its parts. I think one of the most exciting things about the way things are going now um, in 2014 is the way that these sort of art music and, and uh, popular culture are kind of merging together, and I think a really great example of that is the this year you featured in an iPad advertisement. Um, and I'm, what is exciting about that for me is the fact that they're putting a piece of contemporary classical music on primetime TV. Was that why you did it? Well, it was my 30 seconds in main, mainstream. Uh, but it, I, I was kind of inspired by the idea that, that uh, somebody composing a piece of classical music on the iPad is not esoteric, it's not abnormal. It's like as normal human activity as baking bread would have been, or playing a, 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 a Angry Birds on your cell phone. I, I, so it, it, it was like normalizing something that people usually don't see as normal behavior. So classical new music is normal. That's the, the kind of aim of this speech. And to finish off, I've got the iPad app. For those who haven't seen it, um, I think it's a really beautiful piece of video, if nothing else. So here's Esapeka um, demonstrating iPads. Maybe. The sound? More sound? Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.